Okay, everyone, I'd like to uh, catch you up on the assignment and the project uh, for the course. Uh, so we'll go through those, uh, starting with the assignment, and then we'll, we'll talk about the project after. Uh, so uh, the assignment uh, will be posted on Moodle at the same time that I post this video. Um, you can see that it's due uh, May 29th, that's a Friday. Uh, you can upload it by 3 p.m., uh, so that's when normally you would have a quiz. Uh, but because your assignment is due, we won't do a quiz uh, that week. Uh, to upload it, you'll use a system called EAS. Uh, the link uh, for EAS is here. Uh, when you go to it, uh, it looks like this. Uh, so you'll log in. Uh, and when you log in, you have to log in with an ENCS username and password. Uh, so for those of you who are students already in uh, ENCS or, or now the Gina Cody School of uh, engineering and computer science. Um, for, for those of you uh, in our, our uh, faculty, then you will already have that username and password. Uh, but if you're not, uh, for example, you're from another institute or may, maybe you're somewhere else in Concordia in a different uh, faculty, uh, then you will have to con contact uh, the, the help desk uh, here. And so you can um, shoot them an email or open a ticket. I'm not sure exactly how they handle and, and request uh, that, that the account be made for you. If for any reason uh, you can't uh, access EAS on time, uh, that's fine. Uh, what you can do is you can uh, just email it to myself uh, and you just email it by 3 p.m. But I'll still have you upload it to EAS. So I, I want it there because that's how the TA gets it and how the TA marks it. And, and your marks will be given back to you through the EAS system. Uh, so. Uh, you can send it to me just to timestamp it, but then you still have to keep on working on, on getting access to that account, okay? So I much prefer that you don't do that. I prefer that you you actually get your account working. And so maybe this week, just try it, see if you can log in, make sure it works. And uh, assuming it works, then, then that should be fine. Okay. Um, all right, uh, and uh, in terms of the due date, uh, in past years I've given slip days and, and things like that. Uh, and so if you've looked at the assignments from, from last year, you might be wondering about that. This year, because it's compressed, uh, we just don't have time. I mean, you, you have just over two weeks to work on this. Uh, you know, starting if you start on it this coming Friday, uh, then you'll have exactly two weeks. Uh, and then I have to get it back to you uh, marked and uh, and the class ends like almost two weeks after this. I mean, everything is, is on such a tight schedule. And so this year I, I'm gonna insist that you actually get it in on time. Uh, it, the system will stop accepting them. I think that's how it behaves uh, after 3 p.m. If it's five minutes late, that's fine. I'll, I'll try and keep it open for five minutes. Okay, but, but I really want whatever you have done, even if it's not done completely, just give me whatever you have uh, at 3 p.m. Okay. Uh, so that's the due date. Now let's talk about the actual content of the assignment itself. And so what I thought this year would, would be a little bit fun is, is to try and tie it into current events. And so as you know, uh, this whole course is online, uh, remote. And uh, as you'll experience through the quizzes and then uh, in the final exam, I do need to have some way to test you about whether you learn the material. Uh, and so that's going to consist of you essentially writing an exam at home, unsupervised. And so as you can imagine, that's sort of created a dilemma uh, for professors. So professors aren't really sure the best way to handle it. And I've seen, you know, 10 or 20 different proposals for, for how to do it. Uh, and so what I'd like you to do is we learned about evaluation frameworks. And so what I'd like you to do is, is start building an evaluation framework for, for different ways to administer an exam uh, given that the student is not going to be in a controlled environment, okay? And so you might put the emphasis on, you know, sort of security properties like uh, making it hard to cheat, uh, for example. Uh, you might put it on sort of accessibility issues, you know, what kind of computers do students have, what kind of access do they have to the internet, that type of thing. Um, you might put the emphasis on like how easy is it to mark you know, that's something that I have to contend with. Imagine just for a second that you have 100 students, uh, you have to mark all 100 of those exams. Um, and so there's a lot of different trade-offs. Uh, and so I don't wanna give them all away. I want you to think about them. And just to get you started, I gave you two examples that are kind of on the extreme end. So 
Uh, one example is I could give you what's called just a take home exam. Basically, I, I give you some questions. They're usually more like a project or an assignment than a, what you might think of as an exam uh, because you have 24 hours to work on it. Uh, you, you're usually written, so you, you sort of work through the exam or maybe it's coding, maybe there's some numerical examples, not really relevant for this course, but in other types of courses. And then you return uh, the take home exam. You just email it back. So that's a pretty low, uh, like a, a non-technical way of doing it. Now, a, a much more technical way sort of uh, to the extreme is, uh, so Concordia actually went out and, and they brought, uh, got a, a license to this software called Proctorio. So you can do a little bit of research on it. You don't have to go into the details of it. Just take a look at the website just to get a sense of kind of what it does. Um, but basically uh, you need a laptop that has a webcam and it kind of, I, I don't even know the full details of it, but I think you have to, show the software, like you have to scan around the room and then you leave your webcam on and then it watches you and it's using machine learning or, or some sort of AI algorithms. And if it sees anything suspicious, uh, then it will kind of, it will alert the professor. And because it's running on your computer, uh, then it can monitor, like, are you opening your browser in the middle of the exam and, and, and things like that, okay? Um, and so that's, as you can imagine, that's very evasive. Uh, you know, technology to put on your computer and, and having a webcam on you uh, and, and showing off, you know, your apartment and maybe there's other people in your apartment, you know, you can start to imagine that there, there are security and privacy implications uh, to using it. So that's something that, that maybe is, is good for, and who knows, is it even good at detecting cheating, right? Like I'm sure you can think of five ways to uh, evade uh, the security of it, okay? And so I thought it'd be fun to sort of think about these. Uh, and so we're going to do it in the context of an evaluation framework because that's something that you've seen already. And uh, instead of you, do, you know, doing a full-blown evaluation framework where you have five rows and 10 columns or whatever, uh, what we're going to do is we're just going to ask you some more specific questions. So you won't actually, at the end of the day, have to do an entire evaluation framework, but you'll do different pieces of it. Uh, so you can see that we split it uh, into... Uh, four different questions. And so in question one, you'll come up with the rows of the evaluation uh, framework, okay? So what what are different ways that you might do a remote exam? Uh, you'll come up with five of them, plus uh, there's the two that I gave you. So I told you about Proctorio, and we remember we don't evaluate brand names of technologies, okay? So it's it's about as a, as a more general concept. So as a general, ex general concept, it's an exam, it's real time, you know, you have three hours to write it, and there's this online monitor, monitoring, or you can think of it as AI or machine learning monitoring, whatever. You, you can change that phrasing if you don't like it exactly. Um, it's just sort of what came to me on the top of my head. Um, so, so that's one category, and so that's one brand of, of technology that does it, but there might be other brands, and the brands might change over time, okay? So you evaluate the category of technology, but that's one category. A take-home exam is a different category. Uh, so what I want you to do is, is come up with five others and uh, you can describe them uh, and don't spend a lot of space uh, doing it. So, so four sentences maximum to describe uh, what they are. If you can do it in one or two, that's fine as well. Okay. Then what you'll do is you'll come up with the columns. Okay. So for columns, we want six security. That's in question two. And then in question three, you'll do six usability and six deployability criteria. Okay. Uh, for each criteria, what you're going to do is you're going to describe it briefly. Uh, and importantly, you're going to say, what does it mean to get a full dot? What does it mean to get a half dot? What does it mean to get a no dot? Okay, so you have to have a very crisp definition of, of what it means to get each of those. If you don't want a half dot, like it's sort of, you know, either you have it or you don't, it's sort of binary, that's fine. Okay, uh, if you want to have a kind of intermediate level, like it sort of partially satisfies the criteria, uh, then, then uh, you can give it a half dot. Uh, so that's up to you whether you want to use a half dot or not. Now for the security criteria, I also want you to think a bit about stride. And so uh, I'm not going to make you pick one from each category of stride, but make sure that you have at least three different categories of stride. Um, and so you can, uh, so four of them, I guess, can all be from the same category and then, and then the other two are from different categories. 
uh, or you can split it up any way you want. You can try and pick one from each. It, it, it doesn't really matter, but just make sure that you have at least three different categories. And for each of them, for all six of them, say which category uh, they belong to. Okay, uh, so that's for the security side. Uh, yeah, okay. And then in question four, you'll actually do the evaluation. And in this case, instead of evaluating um, uh, all of the five alternatives plus the two that I gave you, uh, what you'll do is you'll just do it for one. So you're not going to do the entire table. You're going to do like sort of one row in the table itself. Okay. And so the row that I want you to evaluate it on is the real-time exam with online monitoring uh, row. So, so everyone in the class will, will evaluate it, will evaluate the exact same row, but you should all have different criteria. So you're not going to have the exact same 18, you know, criteria. Um, and so you'll evaluate it, uh, and then uh, for each, uh, each criteria, you're going to say, okay, I gave it a full dot for this criteria because whatever. I gave it a half dot. I gave it no dot. Okay. And once again, keep those short. You don't have to say a lot. It, it should be pretty obvious. If you, if you have a really good definition of what a full dot, half dot, no dot means, it shouldn't take you a lot of words to justify why you gave it it. Uh, I just want to make sure that, that you're actually thinking through everything directly. Okay. Uh, the other thing I'll mention uh, is, uh, so there's some best practices that we talk about in class, so make sure you follow them. Uh, I forget all of them, but off the top of my head, there's things like phrase the criteria positively. Okay, so you want to have as many dots as possible. The best system uh, has the most dots as possible. The criteria you use uh, will be totally different than passwords, I expect. Okay, if there, there might be a few that are, are the same, and so that's fine. Uh, but but the, the point here isn't to pick the same criteria as for evaluating passwords because passwords and online exams are, are completely different technologies. And so uh, I would expect that most of your criteria will be completely different uh, from, from the password example or any of the other examples. So there's uh, four or five examples at the very end uh, of the document as well. And so you can look at those. All right. Uh, what else? Um, okay, I think I think that's it about the assignment. Uh, if you have questions or if something's not clear or ambiguous, uh, let me know during during office hours. I'll, I'll answer any questions you have about it. And uh, if there's any detail that I think I should really add to it, I'll add it to the course website. Um, I'll either update the assignment if there's an actual error in the assignment. Or if it's more like a pointer kind of thing, I started an FAQ section. And so this I'll, I'll update as the semester goes along. And so if, if you have questions about the assignment uh, and I think the assignment's unclear, I'll, I'll put it there, uh, the answer, the question and the answer uh, to, to the query about the assignment itself. Okay, uh, so let's talk then about the project. Okay, uh, so the project, um, let me change this quickly. Okay, so you'll submit it over EAS uh, the same way as the assignment. I'll add the same instructions uh, to this document after I uh, stop the video. But uh, anyways, I, it will be due the last class. And so the, the last class, I'll put the exact date in, um, but we don't have a lecture the very last week. I, I felt like there was enough content without going through all the lectures. Uh, and so uh, the last class, uh, the last week of classes, uh, you won't have a lecture. I believe that the term ends on a Wednesday. And so it will sort of be due Wednesday and then the exam period will start after that. Um, once again, uh, like normally I'm pretty lenient, like if you want more time and things like that, but this year it's just everything's so compressed. Uh, the exams themselves, the whole period is, is less than a week. And so I'm not going to give uh, extensions uh, this year. I just, I can't do it. And if you, it, it just doesn't make sense either because you need time to study for the final exam uh, as well. So in past years, you know, the final exam is like three weeks long. And so if the exam's early, I might let you hand it in after the exam or, or different things like that. Um, so, so anyways. All right, uh, okay, so let's, we'll go through the actual uh, details of the project itself. Okay, so uh, the project will be a written uh, report. Uh, 
I don't want it super long. Uh, so we're going to make it eight pages and you can use any layout that you want as long as it's reasonable. It, it doesn't uh, really matter to me. Um, and uh, it doesn't even have to be a full eight pages if, if you think you can say uh, what you want in less. Uh, I also will make a, a, an exception where uh, you can add an appendix if you want. So an appendix is something that comes after the eight pages and uh, I won't read it necessarily. So, so I won't be required to read it. Uh, so if there's something you really, really want to include for completeness or I don't know, maybe you're doing a usability study and you have a whole bunch of pictures, screenshots, or maybe you coded something and you want to put your code in the appendix or uh, there's, there's different uses of an appendix. Uh, you can do that. By the way, for code, I, I don't, if you, if you end up coding something, I, do, I don't prefer to actually see the source code in the document itself. It's, it's better to put it on GitHub and then link to it uh, from the paper itself. But uh, anyways, okay. Uh, so the, uh, the paper itself can be one of two things. Um, you can do original research. Uh, so you can try and study something that nobody studied before and that's acceptable. Or uh, what you can do is you can try and look at other things that people have studied. Okay, so you can do a topic that's based on, on other people's research. Okay, um, and uh, in terms of the topic itself, this is a security course. Anything in security is acceptable. Uh, the one thing that uh, I require though is that it does require an element of evaluation. So now that you're a lecture two or, or two into the course, you realize that it doesn't even really make sense to talk about security without talking about evaluation. You know, what does it even mean for something to be secure? You have to come up with some criteria for evaluating what security means. And so uh, it shouldn't be that much of a stretch to bring in some element of security evaluation. Um, but if you're just like, here's an attack, but I'm not going to talk about how to make it secure, uh, or here's a tool, but I'm not going to, I'm just going to say it's secure, but I'm not going to say why, uh, those types of, of uh, topics would be, would be sort of the only types of things that would be excluded uh, from it. So, so you can do those topics, but you have to add that evaluation component to it. And it just comes so naturally that, that whatever you're thinking of doing, if it has something to do with security, it's, it should just come naturally that, that you would have a component uh, of it uh, that, that concerns evaluation. Okay, uh, in terms of the logistics of the project, um, so this year, because you know we're all socially distancing, it's really hard to do group projects. And so what I expect is most of you will do it individually. Uh, so that's what I'll expect uh, from you. If you want to uh, work with a partner and you have some way of doing that and you're comfortable collaborating online, uh, then that's fine as well. Okay, so you can uh, work in pairs. Uh, in this case, you just have to submit one report uh, with both of your names uh, on it and your student numbers, please, on it uh, through EES. Um, so, so that's fine. Um, now, let's say you want to do a group project. Uh, so you want to do a big three or four person project. Uh, I'm not saying that you can't, okay? So uh, send me an email if, if you think that that's something that you want to do. Uh, and let me just check, for example, that uh, first off, I think there's enough work to be done that it, it would take uh, four people to do it. And secondly, uh, give me a sense that you're comfortable. You have a plan for how you're actually going to pull this off, given that, that you're never going to be in the same room as each other, presumably. Um, and so uh, I just want to check those two things. And then maybe I'll, I, I probably will approve you uh, to do a, if, if you meet those two criteria, I will allow you to do a three or four uh, person project. Okay, so that's fine. Uh, but but I want to check it first. And I absolutely don't want, you know, one or two people to do a project and then you you put three or two other names on, on the title page or whatever. Uh, so I, I want to make sure that that uh, any larger group projects actually have a chance of succeeding as a group. Um, yeah, the, the other thing is, uh, in terms of the project itself, uh, you don't have to pre approve the topics with me. If I don't see your project until it's submitted on EAS, that's perfectly acceptable, okay? So I am here uh, to help. Uh, if, if you want my help, uh, you can ask me during office hours or uh, you can send me emails uh, about things. Uh, one thing I can't do is I can't review a draft of your paper. If you're like, I'm halfway done, can you read it and tell me what you think? Uh, just because I, I can't possibly do that uh, for all students. Um, 
but but other than that, uh, I'm I'm here to help if if you have questions about about different things or uh, just to make sure that you're on the right track, that kind of thing. I'm very happy to answer those questions. Um, uh, you can go over the plagiarism rules. So we talked a bit in the first lecture uh, about uh, plagiarism. And so make sure that you cite your sources, uh, never copy text. Even if you plan on rewriting it or rewriting the grammar, uh, just don't do it. Don't copy and paste text. And it's, it's a really bad practice. That's probably going to get you in trouble. Uh, instead, read uh, what the other people wrote, internalize it, maybe take notes or something like that, and then write what you want to say about it from your notes uh, without actually looking at the original paper. Uh, and if you do that and then you cite the fact that you got the idea from the original paper, you will not commit plagiarism. Like it's impossible uh, in that sense. Um, and so, so that's the most appropriate way of, of going about looking at other people's work. Okay. Um, now, next thing, uh, so let's say you want to do a research project that is based on other people's work. Uh, so in some courses, you might hear this being called a survey. And there is something that is a survey. And I want to be very clear, I do not want a survey. Okay, I, I, I'll accept something that's very similar to a survey. I call them a systemization of knowledge. Um, so, so it's the same idea, but the way that you approach it is different. So I want to spend a little time talking about the differences. So a survey to me means hey, I picked three papers. Um, so let's say, I, I'll give you a concrete example. So, and now you can never use this example. So you can do your project on anything you want, but you can't do it on say the privacy of Bitcoin. Uh, I study Bitcoin a lot. And so let me use that as the operating example. Okay, if I wanna do a survey on the privacy of Bitcoin, I go, I find three papers, I find five papers, whatever, uh, that have something to do with the privacy of Bitcoin. And then in my report, I'm like, okay, there's this paper, it's called, uh, zero coin and this is what they do in zero coin they do blah 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 and then there's this other paper and oh they use this thing called ring signatures and and they do this blah 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 right and then you know three papers and then i'm sort of done and at the end i'm like okay well in this work we looked at these three papers okay and so i don't want that uh because they're just summaries of existing papers uh the three papers even though they're on the same general topic there's no guarantee that they actually have that much to do with each other. And at the end of the day, I don't know which is better. You told me about three different systems, that's fine. But like, what? why should I choose one or why should I choose the other? Like, where's the evaluation, right? How, how do I tell this one's more secure? And uh, not just in terms of security, but how does it trade off in terms of deployability and things uh, like that, okay? So that's a survey paper. Now, a systemization of knowledge paper, you could still do one on the privacy of Bitcoin. And one piece of advice I give you is, it's really nice to think of it in terms of a question, okay? So a question might be, um, what are the different, uh, or, okay, so a question could be, how do you even define, what does privacy mean for a cryptocurrency? You know, what, what, what are we protecting? Are we protecting identities? Are we protecting amounts? Are we protecting it from everyone? Is it like the police can see it, but no one else can see it or nobody can see it? You know, what, what does it privacy even mean, right? And, and maybe it means different things to different people. These, these cypherpunks, they, they want one definition and law enforcement wants a totally different definition, okay? So you could do a paper like that. Or you could be, uh, what's the most private way that we could do a cryptocurrency, okay? And then you'd be like, well, there's three different ways. And, and um, you know, I'm, I'll tell you a bit about each of them, but the emphasis is, isn't on what they do. The emphasis is on the comparison. Okay, so which of these three is more private? Well, it kind of depends on how you define privacy. And then you explain how you define privacy and, and then you evaluate them. You compare and contrast uh, the, the papers. Okay, instead of just summarizing them, you actually think about how they interact. And papers are written in an order. So the person who wrote the first paper has no idea what the people who wrote the second and third paper are going to say. So maybe the first paper is actually good enough and the second and third, they're just sort of, you know, they, they sort of invent a problem that's not even a real world problem. And if you went back to the first author and said, hey, what do you think of these follow-up papers? They might say, well, you know what? I actually still think my paper is the best, right? And so you, as the person who read the three papers, you're able to comment on all three of them independent of, of what order uh, they were written in, okay? Um, uh, yeah, and so, so those are the kinds of questions. You might say, well, what's the most efficient way of doing a private cryptocurrency or, you know, there, there's a hundred different questions. Uh, you don't have to phrase it as a question, but phrasing it as a question is, is very useful because then you know what you have to include and what you don't have to include. 
if you read some papers and they don't really answer the question or they don't help you answer the question that you formulated, then you leave them out, okay? Uh, and uh, and uh, if you can't find anything in an academic paper, but you can find some blog posts or medium posts or uh, articles or white papers or industry white papers, that, those kinds of things, um, if you can find the answer in those things, then you cite them, okay? It doesn't matter. Like, I want to make sure that, that if there are academic resources that you use them, uh, but if you're trying to answer a question and there just aren't good academic papers on it, you're free to use whatever you want. As long as you answer the question, uh, it doesn't, doesn't really matter, okay? So that's the approach of a sort of systemization of knowledge. So there's some knowledge out there. You're going to take it and you're going to organize it. You're going to categorize it. You're going to tell a story uh, with it. You're not just going to, to repeat, you know, what, what all three of the different papers said. You're, you're actually going to try and, and systemize them, okay? The number of references doesn't matter. Uh, I would expect it's, it's hard to do a good comprehensive report without having at least three references. Um, but for a systemization of knowledge, you might have 20 or 30, but you didn't read all 30 of those papers. You just read a bit of them, right? You read enough of them or you read a section of them that's relevant uh, to your topic uh, without reading the, the entire thing, okay? So you might uh, go really deeply through a couple papers or you might do a sort of shallow uh, look at a whole bunch of papers. And, and so they're, they're both appropriate, depends on what your topic is and what you're trying to achieve uh, with your paper, okay? Uh, you can be critical, so sometimes you know, academics writing papers, or especially in commercial white papers, they're trying to sell you something, okay? They want you to like their system. They might not highlight the, the drawbacks of their system. They might not even mention them at all. And so part of your job is to look objectively and say, hey, you know, you, it's true that, that you have all these features that are really good, but there's these other features that you're missing that it's pretty bad that you're actually missing those. And, and uh, you can point that out, even if they're not gonna point it out themselves. Uh, if you want to look for topics, uh, so anything on security is fine. Uh, you can uh, thumb through uh, different conferences. So a good place to start, there's four big security conferences, and they accept papers on all aspects of security. Everything from usability to crypto to system security to, you know, you name it, uh, they, they cover it. Uh, and so you can look through them. Each of them publish like hundreds of papers a year. And so when I say look through them, I mean read titles. Uh, look at the titles, and if you see a couple topics that look kind of interesting, uh, then you can read the abstracts. And the abstracts is like a, a one-paragraph summary of the, of the paper. And you might read, you know, 10 or 20 abstracts, and then, and then three of them look really interesting, and then you'll, you'll maybe read the introduction and conclusion of the paper for those three, and then one of them will be, or, or maybe they're all on the same topic or, or whatever. Uh, and then you can start looking... Once you have that topic, then you can start looking for other papers uh, on the topic that aren't published in, in those four locations. Uh, and so you can use Google Scholar or every paper pretty much has a related work or literature review kind of section in it. And so they'll summarize uh, all the related research. And so that's another way of, of finding other papers uh, that, that you might have missed. Um, okay, so like I said, I'm, I'm here to help. Uh, I, I can't uh, review your drafts, but I, I can certainly answer questions and, and try and make sure that you're on the right approach. Um, uh, yeah, phrasing as a question is useful. That's the next point, which we already covered. Uh, I don't care about references. Uh, like, sorry, I care that you have references and, and that I could find what you're referencing from whatever you write in the reference section, but I don't care if it's like IEEE or APA or whatever format. Doesn't matter as long as as long as I can look at it and know what you're talking about, then that's that's fine. Um, and yeah, security is very broad. Uh, you can be creative. You don't have to do you know technical security. You'll see later in this course we spend a lot of time talking about humans and security as it relates to humans. And um, you know there's there's a lot of things that follow fall under the umbrella of security uh, that you can look at. Okay, uh, in terms of grading. Uh, you can see a little uh, breakdown. Uh, so I'll, I'll, I'll let you read uh, each of these. Uh, they're, they're all important and there's a bunch of, of nuance like in, in what I say, but I'll, I'll just give you the broad uh, sense. So for scope and execution, um, I'm, I'm really concerned, you know, it's not just about what you write, it's sort of why you're writing it. Is it interesting? How do you frame it? 
Uh, if it's a question, why did you choose that question is actually an important question. Um, is the paper make sense? Does it look like you read three papers that sort of had something to do with each other, but not really, and kind of glued them all together? Uh, or does it look like, oh no, this, this, there's a logical flow, right? Like if like this section, I know why this section's in this paper because it's exactly the section that needs to be in the paper after uh, the section that we just talked about. And it's along that path, getting from the start of the, the paper to the end of the paper, okay? So I'm really looking that you put some effort into organizing it and uh, making it coherent, uh, making sure you don't miss things uh, the things that you do talk about, you talk about comprehensively uh, and that kind of thing. Okay. Uh, interpretation is how easy is it to read? Um, and uh, also I'm, I'm sort of looking at it to see how much you understood uh, the papers that, that you wrote or, or the research that you're writing about. Um, so sometimes people, this happens a lot in surveys, uh, people will read a paper and they know, like they, they know the words of, of the, the kinds of technologies that are being used or the protocols or algorithms, and they can repeat them, okay? But you can tell that they just, they don't know what they mean, right? Like they're, they're just sort of repeating what the paper says. Uh, they're maybe using, you know, making it a little less technical uh, as, they, as they do the repeating, okay? Now, if you truly understand something, on, on conversely, you can usually think of it in a different way. You can sort of express it in a new way or express it in, for example, you could take something that's highly technical and simplify it. And that's really hard to do if you don't understand uh, it in the full technicality, okay? Simplifying is, is really hard. You can remove all the big words and use smaller words, but then it just, logically, it doesn't sound simple or it doesn't really make sense or, or things are missing, okay? So I really wanna see that you understand uh, what, what's being writing, uh, sorry, understand what you're writing about and I can, I, you know, I don't know how I can tell, but I can just tell when I read it, uh, sort of, you know, the, how, how much you understood something. And, you know, just because like, for example, sometimes students will just copy an equation. Okay. But there's, there's no indication that they understood that equation, right? You know, do they, do they explain what the variables mean? Do they say why this equation and not another equation? If you turn that plus sign into a, a minus sign, why, why is that wrong? You know, why? You know, and so everything that you explain, you need to, to explain uh, very well and demonstrate uh, that, that you really understand uh, what you're explaining. Uh, in terms of technicality, this is a graduate level course. Uh, so I'm expecting that, that you use some of the concepts uh, from class or some of the, at least some of the concepts that you'll learn in a master's of computer security. Uh, and so uh, a certain level of technicality that's appropriate uh, for graduate levels. Uh, and and uh, everything you say should be correct. Uh, that goes without saying, but if, if you say things that are wrong, uh, then you'll lose marks uh, under technicality. Uh, the final thing is the presentation uh, itself. And so, uh, you know, you should have a high quality deliverable. Uh, it should be well written. Uh, you should cite appropriately, meaning not what the citation looks like, but, but you should be citing at the right times. Uh, so, so every time you, you get an idea from somewhere else, you should be using a citation. Uh, you might have figures, you might have tables, you might not. Uh, so if I read it, I'm like, wow, this really needs a, a table, then you might, you know, have marks taken off. Uh, conversely, you might have a figure and I might read it and think, you know, you really don't need this figure. This figure is really simple. I don't, I don't know why it's included. Uh, maybe it's a figure that you didn't even make yourself. You just copied it from another paper. Those kinds of things aren't, aren't that's not a high quality deliverable, okay? So whether you use figures or tables doesn't matter. It's just what, you know, you have to decide whether it's appropriate. Can you really say something uh, with a, a picture that, that would really clarify uh, what's going on? Uh, then a figure is appropriate. Uh, but if you're just making a figure for the sake of a figure, then it's inappropriate. Um, and uh, the amount of work uh, that goes into the project also uh, will be something that, that I'll look at. And so uh, it if, for example, uh, even though you can work uh, individually or in pairs, if you work in pairs, I expect, you know, twice as much work. Uh, if, if you come to me with a group project for four people and I approve it, uh, you know, I am expecting a substantially, you know, a report that's substantially better than something that an individual could write. Okay. And so sometimes in past years, I've, I've had two reports and one was written by an individual. The other has four names on it. And they look the same. I mean, I can't tell a difference uh, between them. Uh, not like literally they're, they're the same 
report, but I mean, just in terms of the quality and the amount of work and the number of papers they read and things like that, it just looks exactly the same uh, between them. So uh, if you, uh, yeah, if you if you want to work in pairs, then then you have to do um, more work uh, as a pair than than as an individual. Okay, so if your friends come to you and they want you know to you to put their name on the cover of your paper, don't do it because uh, you'll you'll lose marks uh, because if if they don't actually add any content uh, to the paper, then there's a high chance that you'll lose marks because uh, it just sort of dilutes uh, the contribution. Anyways, I know most of you, 99% of you wouldn't do that, so that's fine. Um, okay, uh, yeah, so so that's it. So uh, assignment, project, uh, they're posted, so take a look at them. If you have more questions, uh, come Wednesday uh, to office hours and you can ask them uh, any questions that I think are good. Uh, I'll add to the frequently asked questions at the top of the course. And uh, finally, uh, there is a quiz on Friday, uh, just as a reminder. And so uh, make sure that you're online. Uh, maybe, uh, so class actually starts 15 minutes before the class, before the quiz, so it might be good to, to come on a little bit early. Uh, the quiz will just be multiple choice. It will be on Moodle itself. Uh, I have never given a quiz on Moodle, so I, I can't really tell you technically what it's going to look like. Uh, the first one will be a bit of an experiment, I guess. And then uh, hopefully in subsequent uh, quizzes, we'll, we'll really lock in uh, exactly what the format is and, and everything so that it works very well. I'll try and give you a generous amount of time, more than, than I would expect you need uh, to answer the questions. And uh, yeah, yeah. So you can expect like something like maybe on the order of 10 multiple qu choice questions. Okay, so it shouldn't take you very long. If you know the answers, it's something that literally will take you five or 10 minutes. Uh, and I'll give you, I'll leave it open for like something like half an hour, uh, just just in case, uh, especially since it's the first one. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll revisit that as we go throughout the course. Okay, great. So I'll see some of you on Wednesday. Uh, and if not, uh, have a good week and enjoy the lectures.